Okay, so uh, for this deep dive, you've sent us down a rabbit hole mm -hmm. of literary conspiracy, really. Yeah. We're digging into Shakespeare authorship. Yeah. Um, but specifically, a poem called a visa that might just hold the key okay. to unlocking yeah. a centuries-old secret. I like it. Right. I like where we're going. Yeah. It's fascinating how this one poem mm -hmm. has become a focal point for those who believe that Christopher Marlowe, right. not William Shakespeare, penned some of the most... Right, because it's not just a visa itself. Yeah. It's how it connects, supposedly, to Shakespeare's most famous plays. Exactly. So before we get into the nitty-gritty, yeah. remind us, what is a visa? Yeah. So, and why should we care about it? A visa is an allegorical poem, Okay. meaning it uses symbolic characters and events to represent something else. Okay. And in this case, the YouTube video you shared right. argues that a visa is a cleverly disguised autobiography of Christopher Marlowe himself. Oh, okay, so it's like a secret message hidden in plain sight. Precisely. Okay. The video claims that Marlowe, fearing for his safety, used this poem to reveal his true identity as Shakespeare. Okay. Through coded messages and allusions to his own life. And those coded messages, those are what make Avisa the center of this whole debate. Absolutely. So, yeah. The video meticulously analyzes specific passages, huh? characters, and even the poem's publication timeline, right? interpreting them as evidence of Marlowe's hidden hand. So let's dive into those details. Sure. Give us the rundown on what the video considers the smoking guns within a visa. Yeah. Where do they see these so-called coded messages? They start with the structure of the poem itself. Okay. Avisa revolves around this woman, Avisa, right. who steadfastly rejects a string of suitors. Hold on. Yeah. Each rejected guy is a secret portrait of a real person. That's what they're saying. That's kind of a power move, turning down wow. potential patrons in such a public way. The video even suggests that the descriptions of these suitors okay. align with details about their real-life counterparts. So each suitor is like a puzzle piece potentially revealing the yeah. literary world of Elizabethan England. Absolutely. Who are some of the figures they connect to these suitors? So the video that you provided focuses primarily on the connection to Marlowe himself. Okay. Uh, but it's a fascinating thought experiment, isn't it? It really makes you want to dig deeper and uncover those potential connections. Right. But let's focus on the star of this theory, Marlowe. Let's do it. What specific clues do they pull from Avisa to support the idea that he's the one yeah. pulling the strings? One compelling piece of evidence they highlight is the character W.S., who appears in the poem's preface. Okay. This, of course, immediately brings to mind William Shakespeare. Okay, I see where this is going. Right. A not-so-subtle hint dropped right there in the introduction. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. The video argues that this W.S. is not a coincidence, but a deliberate clue left by Marlowe. Okay. They also point to specific lines and phrases in a visa that seem to echo Marlowe's known writing style. Okay. Suggesting a stylistic fingerprint linking him to the poem. So they're saying it's not just the content, but the actual way the poem's written that points to Marlowe? Exactly. Like a linguistic analysis of a secret code? I like it. What kind of stylistic similarities are we talking about? The video delves into the use of specific imagery. Okay. Like vivid descriptions of nature and classical mythology. Right. Which were common elements in Marlowe's other works. Okay. They argue that these shared motifs suggest a common authorial voice. So it's like those recurring themes or stylistic quirks you find in an artist's work. Absolutely. But is there anything beyond just these stylistic similarities and the WS reference mm -hmm. that links Marlowe to Avisa? Yes. What about the historical context? That's where it gets even more interesting. Okay. The video connects passages in Avisa yeah. to real events in Marlowe's life. So For example, there's a section where the author of Avisa talks about being a young man and a scholar of very good hope. Okay. Who departed voluntarily to Her Majesty's service. Okay. The video links this directly to Marlowe's documented travels mm -hmm. in service of Queen Elizabeth I. Okay, so they're not just pulling literary analysis out of thin air. Right. They're grounding their arguments in actual historical records. Exactly. That definitely lends some credibility, yeah. even if it's still just a theory. But yeah. why go through all this trouble... Yeah. Why not just publish under his own name? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? Right. And to answer it, we need to delve into the dangerous world Marlowe found himself in. Right. Remember, this was Elizabethan England. 
Right. This was a time of political and religious upheaval. Exactly. Expressing the wrong opinions could land you in hot water, to say the least. Without a doubt. Yeah. Without a doubt. Is there any evidence to suggest why Marlowe might have felt the need to write under a pseudonym to potentially be someone else entirely? Well, the historical record suggests that Marlowe was no stranger to controversy. Oh. He was actually accused of heresy and sedition right. charges yeah. that could have led to imprisonment or even execution. Okay, that definitely puts a different spin on things. Right. Suddenly, writing under a pseudonym seems less like a literary game yeah. and more like a matter of survival. Exactly. Yeah. And the video argues that this atmosphere of fear and paranoia is essential to understanding why Marlowe might have felt the need to disappear okay. to create a new identity for himself. So a visa becomes less about claiming credit and mm -hmm. more about sending a coded message while also protecting yourself. Exactly. It's the high stakes literary puzzle, basically. Exactly. And like any good puzzle, it's the details that really make the case compelling. Yeah. Or at least that's what the video argues. Okay. They point to a specific section where the author of Avisa writes about a fantastical fit yeah. and a fatal change of destiny. Sounds almost autobiographical. Like he's hinting at a major upheaval in his own life. That's exactly how the video interprets it. Okay. They argue that Marlowe is alluding to his supposed fake death in 1593. Wait, hold on. Uh, fake death? Are we going full conspiracy theory here? It's a widely debated theory. Okay. Among those who subscribe to the Marlowian authorship theory. Okay. They believe Marlowe didn't actually die as history records, right. but instead went into hiding. And Avisa is like his message in a bottle. Right. His way of telling the world, I'm still here, but I can't tell you who I am. Precisely. Wow. And they point to a specific passage in Canto 69, okay. where the author writes about taking flight and living in secret silence until the truth is revealed. They believe this refers to Marlowe assuming the name Shakespeare and mm -hmm. continuing to write under this new, safer identity. That's their argument. It's a bold claim. It is. And the video backs it up by drawing parallels between Avisa and Shakespeare's Venus and Adonis, which was published just a year after Marlowe's supposed death. Okay. They claim certain phrases and themes. Okay. Especially around passionate love and tragic downfall. Right. Appear in both, hinting at a common author. So it's like those recurring motifs you see in a painter's work? Exactly. A fingerprint, but with words instead of brush strokes. Exactly. But if he was trying to stay hidden, why write at all? Yeah. Why not just enjoy a peaceful, anonymous life? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? Right. The video suggests that perhaps Marlowe couldn't silence his artistic voice. Okay. Even with his life potentially on the line. Right. It's a powerful testament to the drive to create, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. Yeah. To risk everything, yeah. even your freedom for the sake of art. Yeah. But this idea of a hidden author, mm -hmm. of writing under a false identity, it's not unique to the Shakespearean era, is it? Not at all. Right. Think of the Bronte sisters right. using male pen names <laughs> to navigate the patriarchal <laughs> world of 19th century publishing. Right. Or even J.K. Rowling. Exactly. More recently. Exactly. It makes you wonder what other secrets are hiding in plain sight. Right. What other stories are waiting to be uncovered if we just know where to look? And that's what's so captivating about this theory surrounding Avisa. Okay. It encourages us to question what we think we know about literary history right. and consider alternative narratives. So Avisa is this potential breadcrumb trail leading us back to Marlowe. Right. But if the poem is his message in a bottle, yeah. who was he trying to reach? Who was his intended audience? That's a great question. Yeah. The video suggests that Marlowe wasn't necessarily trying to reveal his secret to the entire world. Right. At least not directly. Okay. Instead, they argue that he was communicating with a specific audience, okay. his fellow writers, intellectuals, right. and others in his circle who would have been familiar with his style, right. his yeah. life, yeah. and the dangerous political climate of the time. Yeah. So not just a message, but a message targeted at a very specific group. It's yeah. like a secret handshake, way of signaling to those in the know. Exactly. But if a visa is this veiled autobiography, this okay. confession in poetic form, What's the big reveal? What's the heart of Marlowe's message beyond simply revealing his identity? That's where the video takes perhaps this most controversial turn. Okay. They point to a particularly poignant passage where the author laments being betrayed by a friend. Okay. A miserable comforter 
who enlarged the wound instead of helping. Ouch. Right. Sounds like a serious friend betrayal. Yeah, and they interpret this as... And so they're suggesting this isn't just about Marlowe going into hiding. They're saying he was betrayed, and this passage right. is his way of pointing fingers. Who do they think he's talking about? The video points to the most likely suspect, at least in their view, being none other than William Shakespeare himself. Oh, wow. Or perhaps more accurately, the person we've come to know as Shakespeare. Whoa, hold on. This just went full conspiracy theory. Right. They're suggesting Shakespeare was in on it, that he was somehow complicit. That's one interpretation the video presents, well, though it's but... important to note that it's highly speculative. Okay. They paint a picture where this Shakespeare figure might have been involved in covering up Marlowe's fake death. Right. Perhaps even profiting from his work while Marlowe lived in the shadows, forced to remain silent. <laughs> Okay, that's a pretty dramatic accusation. It's like something out of one of their plays, a tale of betrayal, mistaken identity, and hidden genius. Mm. But if we entertain this theory, even just for a moment, what does it say about how we understand these literary giants? What does it say about authorship itself? That's the real heart of the matter, isn't it? This deep dive into Avisa and the Marlowe theory ah. forces us to confront the limits of what we know. It challenges the traditional narrative and encourages us to consider that Literary history, like all history, is often a murky blend of fact and speculation. It's like you said at the beginning, this one poem acts as a kind of lens refracting how we see these familiar figures. Mm -hmm. Even if we don't fully subscribe to the conspiracy theory, it raises fascinating questions. Absolutely. What if Marlowe did fake his death? What if he did continue writing under a different name? It adds a layer of intrigue and mystery to these already iconic works. Absolutely. And it underscores the idea that interpretation is an active process. What we bring to a text, our own perspectives and experiences, shapes how we understand it. Right. There's always room for new discoveries and reinterpretations, even with works as widely studied as Shakespeare's, or should we say Marlowe's. Right. This deep dive reminds us that the world of literature is full of hidden passages and secret codes just waiting to be deciphered. So for you, our listener, we hope this exploration has sparked your curiosity and left you with more questions than answers. Maybe you'll even be inspired to do some digging of your own. After all, you never know what literary treasures you might unearth if you start looking for the stories hidden beneath the surface.